Hello everyone and welcome to the EDB Space Program, a collaborative space program on Twitch where viewers submit craft to fulfill contracts. And by popular demand, I have decided to start doing commentary on our missions. And right now we are beginning the race for the moon. Our first goal in this endeavor is to have the first successful EVA. We have not actually done an EVA yet in this space program. And this launch was the Green Bee 2 on the Pond CM rocket designed by Mikko Gagozov and with a launch script written by Nadav FR and well the staging did not go quite right uh, we had a second stage ignition failure you can see the fuel was unsettled after it failed to stage the first time and then the launch script uh, continued staging until it found an engine it could work with we aborted and uh, Valentina was then brought back to the surface so uh, not such a great deal on that one, but uh, sometimes you have to get that staging timing quick and it didn't happen quite there. At least Valentina ended up safe. So far we have not lost any Kerbals, we are proud to announce. But uh, here is Orbital Launch 61, the Crow version 1 from Cool Industries. Uh, this is a spacecraft and launcher designed by Coolony14 and with a uh, launch script by myself. As you can see, a rocket with two boosters, uh, RD-108 center and RD-107s on the boosters. These are engines from the R-7 rocket family. On this launch, as you can see, Jebediah is aiming to be the first one to EVA. So we have multiple contractors, and I for the most part play as NASA or the space program itself. And the various contractors offer up their own designs and compete to get NASA contracts, as happens in real life. And as also happens in real life, uh, generally the space program picks the cheapest option first. And uh, once that fails, then we go to the next cheapest option. Here we had a second stage engine failure. Uh, it was supposed to hot stage, but test flight uh, prevented it from doing so, and so we had to abort again. And Jeb did not make order this time. So, as far as aiming for the moon is concerned, we, we're off to a rough start. One reason we haven't gotten as much test flight data as the real world uh, space programs would have had is because we have a lot more engines to work with because the single space program is using engines from Russia, from America, and uh, all sorts of different mixtures of engines that uh, didn't exist in real life. So uh, this launch is uh, from Shearstrut Industries, which is the EDB's own internal design bureau. Uh, this spacecraft was not meant for this rocket, but in an effort to have the first EVA in time to make the contract, because we do have a a schedule to keep, we do have a deadline. Uh, the EDB decided to put it on this uh, Spike 16K rocket, but it does not look like this rocket likes this particular capsule, which is actually meant for a larger rocket, which would hurl it uh, to the moon. There were oscillations, but uh, somehow we managed to get through the first stage. The two engine shutdown there was planned to reduce G-forces, otherwise the G-forces would have exceeded more than four Gs. And so it was a wobbly ride for Valentina, but not one that needed to be aborted. Incidentally, this engine is the same engine that had the ignition failure on the first launch in this video, and then had a test flight failure on the second launch in this video. This is the RD-0110. So this rocket has the benefit of uh, the accumulation of data from those two previous launches. So this time, at least, it was successful and brought us to orbit despite the first stage wobblies. The spacecraft itself, the Craft Miracle Pond, is actually meant to go to the moon. In fact, uh, it is uh, configured right now as a uh, lunar lander. You can see the solar panels uh, covering landing struts, as it were and two Astros engines, and lots of fuel. And so if there had been some sort of issue with the engine, it's possible that this could have aborted to orbit past a certain point, and that was partly the intention. But in any case, it is uh, time for 
Valentina to do the EVA. We're just making sure everything is all right for that. Everything seems to be in order. All right, EVA. And accumulation of data from the EVA report. Unfortunately, the EVA report is not bio-independent, so Valentina cannot get as much science as would otherwise be available. But in any case, she is ready now to come down. You can see that we lost an RCS thruster, and then subsequently lost another RCS thruster, and that led to uh, concern about exactly how those RCS thrusters were configured for failures. Uh, so we will have to make some adjustments on that because this was a relatively short mission and there we have the second thruster failure and if you have this kind of failure on such a short mission it does not bode well for a mission to the moon. It also seems a little bit unreasonable. So here we have service module separation time. There we go. And the capsule is ready to re-enter now. With luck, Valentina will be alright. Here we go. From low Earth orbit, it is a relatively mild re-entry compared to from the moon, and this is a lunar rated heat shield on the capsule. And so, with the parachutes deployed, we see 6.4 meters per second, and a successful splashdown for Valentina, and our first EVA is in order. Silver 4 on the Strider 2LR by Mikko Gagozov of Tangra Aerospace with a launch script from Nadav FR. The goal of this mission was to fulfill a contract to place a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. It was a valuable contract that would give us the funds to build future rockets to launch Kerbals to the moon and so we dearly wanted to see it succeed. It required a barometer and a film return camera, oddly enough, because it wasn't expected to return, so having a film return camera, which is actually a modified Science Junior, uh, was unusual. Here we have a successful ignition of this particular engine, though uh, still uh, quite a long delay, same engine. Uh, no avoiding this particular engine because it is so efficient. There were no problems up to orbit in fact. As you can see the engine uh, completing orbit here as it finishes its burn. Fairly tight on that. Just enough delta V. And we are ready to go. Indeed, uh, no delta V remaining in that particular stage. And this is the translunar injection. After this stage, the probe had 1,500 meters per second in order to place itself into the proper lunar orbit, and that was expected to be more than enough. And that stage was alright, no problems, no issues with the engine, and so we were clear to proceed to the moon. The required orbit was fairly high above the moon, which is good for communications, and of course it has good communications here as we try to do the orbital burn. Only the first of many to make sure that it is in the proper orbit, of course, and quite scenic there. Unfortunately, because the film return camera only gives science when it is returned, and the barometer reading we had already done, there was no new science to be gained from this particular mission. But the contract was fulfilled, we got into the correct orbit, and the contractors received their struts. And so we move on to the first lunar flyby attempt, over launch 64, with the Craft Miracle Pod on the Bluebird rocket this time. The Craft Miracle Pod, of course, uh, from Shear Strut Industries, the EDB's own internal engineering department. And the Bluebird rocket from Cool Industries, designed by Coolony14. A much larger rocket capable of hurling the Craft Miracle Pod all the way to the moon, and uh, obviously sturdier and well tested in this case, so that there are no wobbles to worry about. 
the EDB will have to soon hire new Kerbonauts, but for now, it is Valentina's mission to fly by the moon. And here, the Bluebird's first stage, seven E1 engines, uh, burning well, kerosene and oxygen, providing the necessary thrust to lift the rocket out through the atmosphere. As these were new engines, the loss of one engine was anticipated and one did go out, uh, but in order to limit G-forces, two more were supposed to be shut down. Instead of just shutting down two engines, however, uh, all of the engines were shut down on the first stage at the time when G-forces were supposed to be limited, and that caused a premature engine shutdown and uh, move on to the next stage. Fortunately, the pod was under the payload limits of this particular launcher, and so there was still enough Delta V to proceed to orbit and proceed on with the mission, of course. The pod would have been capable of aborting to orbit if necessary uh, with a certain amount of delta V loss, but in this case, the mission was still a go. And so here we are making orbit thanks to the Bluebird rocket. And ignition for translunar injection. In this case, uh, three S1 5400 engines an early variant of the RD-58. And here we have completion of the lunar transfer. There were numerous issues along the way, including an inability to get the correct electric charge from the solar panels, as anticipated, and also RCS failures that mysteriously fixed themselves after a trip to the tracking station. Thankfully, the service module has ample delta V to make any corrections. It has 3,200 meters per second. In addition to the other problems we had, we also had a mysteriously displacing heat shield shroud as we conducted our lunar flyby. Would have very much liked to have a proper, proper image of the craft flying by the moon, but we instead had that issue. This is a correction burn to ensure that we have a good orbit coming back. And after it became apparent that removing the ablator from the Mark 1 pod was not such a good idea, uh, we decided to use the remaining Delta V in the service module to drop our orbit. And again, it has quite a substantial amount of Delta V, and we were able to reduce our orbit by quite an extent. Here is the separation of the service module. And so it was uh, only a bit higher than a normal low Earth orbit re-entry, making it much safer on the entire system. We will of course have to try proper lunar transfers later on before conducting a lunar landing. And so here we have re-entry, high g-forces anticipated, explosion of the service module, Valentina excited to come back home. The next step after this mission, of course, is lunar orbit. This craft, uh, with a blader on the Mark 1 pod, would have been able to do that also with upgraded solar panels since they didn't seem to be delivering the expected charge. So we are looking for upgrades before attempting lunar orbit. It may or may not be this pod. But after that, we will have to aim for a lunar landing. Currently, our launch pad is only able to accommodate rockets up to 800 tons, uh, which leads to a launch capacity to low Earth orbit of around 30 tons per launch. So that is quite restrictive. We are not sure whether we are going to be able to upgrade the pad before competitors start launching lunar landing missions. We will have to see. Upgraded engines are expected, but not anything revolutionary just yet. We have opted for improved stage combustion rather than Hydrolox engines, so that will lead to an interesting challenge. And so, with Valentina's successful return after a lunar flyby, we look forward to the efforts of our contractors to help the EDB space program spread Kerbal Kind all over the solar system, starting with the moon. On that note, I leave you to enjoy Valentina's return, 
and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you will join us on Twitch for the further exploits of the EDB Space Program.